So it's 7.32 and I'll call this meeting to order. I'm joined by my colleagues, Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Studo, Mrs. Gonzalez, and Mr. Walner. And for the purposes of the open meeting law, this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and by the town via Zoom and may be recorded by others in attendance. And we'll begin with the recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And we'll call the first order of business, which is public comment. Is there anybody that wishes to speak in public comment? You can unmute yourself and identify yourself by name and address or press the chat room to let us know that you'd like to speak. I don't see anybody. Uh, Madam Chair, if I might just send a public oh, except comment. Except Mr. O'Leary. <laughs> yeah, just, a, just, a, just a couple of things. One, one I think we should uh, uh, certainly acknowledge uh, a couple of people. One, one is uh, General Colin Powell, uh, former Joint Chiefs of uh, Staff and uh, former Secretary of State who passed away uh, today uh, from COVID related uh, illness. I mean, tremendous. Uh, public figure and public servant who served our country in Vietnam and the military. And again, as I said, Joint Chiefs of Staff and former Secretary of State under uh, several uh, administrations bipartisanly and uh, a tremendous loss to the country. And um, just, I think we should acknowledge that. Uh, secondarily, uh, a former um, member of this board, uh, Rosalie Senior, who served on the board from 1992 to 1995 and served as, as chair uh, of this board passed away a couple of weeks ago. Uh, she had moved from North Reading with her husband, Jim. And so many people who've been around town for a while knew both Jim and Rosalie. Uh, Rosalie, um, along with her husband, uh, sil uh, tirelessly served this community in various capacities and volunteer boards, committees and commissions. And again, Rosalie served as a member of uh, this board and served as chair um, you know, with distinction. And uh, the community is certainly uh, far better off for People like Rosalie and Rosalie specifically in the service that she provided uh, to North Reading and I offer our condolences uh, uh, to her family and uh, with great appreciation uh, for her service. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Seeing none, Mr. Gilberto, none? I see none. Okay. Our next order of business is a proclamation Veterans and Military Families Appreciation Month and Veterans Day with a, a vote to be taken to read the proclamation. I'll turn it over to you, Mrs. Gonzalez. You're muted. Um, so I'm thrilled to bring this before the board. Um, I brought this to uh, our veterans director, Sue Magner's attention and asked her if she would like to have a proclamation for the month of November uh, for the veterans. And she went right to work, right to work on it and um, was just thrilled. Uh, we discussed it in our um, veterans committee, veterans events committee, and um, everybody was just so excited about it. Um, so Sue did a fantastic job, and I was hoping that she'd be here tonight. I don't see her on here. Um, I'm here. Oh, you are here. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm, I'm on voice, but I'm here. Oh, great. That's fantastic. So, um, yeah, so I'd like to present this to the board and hopefully vote on it and um, allow our veteran director to read it. Um. Uh, Mrs. Gonzalez, I don't have it in front of me. I thought that the board was reading it on my. Oh, that's fine. I can read it. Is there you... anything else, Ms. Magner? Mrs. Magner, welcome to the meeting. And everybody knows Mrs. Magner is our veteran services agent for the town. Is there anything else you'd like to add to the presentation before we um, take a vote to read the proclamation? No, just a reminder to everybody we're going to be doing the ceremonies. Um, on the common this year, 
um, uh, hoping that the weather will hold well for us. If not, I'm working with the batch elder to see if it's a, a second venue option. Um, and then just a reminder again to put out there to the people that the dinner tickets are available um, uh, courtesy of the Tuxbury Country Club. And that will be held on, again, November 11th. Doors opening at 4.30 at the Tuxbury Country Club on Route 38 in Tuxbury. Thank you. And do we have any questions of my colleagues before we take a vote to read the proclamation? Any other questions or comments? All right, do we have a vote? Um, excuse me, do we have a motion, Mr. Studo? <laughs> You're muted. Madam Chair, I move to proclaim November 2021 as Veterans and Military Families Appreciation Month in North Reading, to proclaim November 11, 2021 as Veterans Day in North Reading, and to read the attached proclamation. Mrs. Gonzalez, if you'd like to second. I would love to second. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. I guess. Aye. You can say aye. Mr. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. M Mrs. Gonzalez, would you like to read it or do you want me to read it? Um, it, it doesn't matter. I can read it if you like or if you'd like All to. All right. It's on 13 of the packet, page 13, well, my page 13 of the packet. Uh, Town of North Reading proclamation for November as Veterans and Military Families Appreciation Month and Veterans Day. Whereas during the month of November and Veterans Day, we take time to reflect with pride and gratitude for America's men and women in uniform who have selflessly sacrificed and committed their lives to answer the call to defend our nation. And whereas it is due to generations of this highest caliber of individuals that place them in a category of their own known as warriors. Only those who have the courage, strength and conviction accept with honor and pride to answer the call of duty to protect these United States, which we proudly call home. And whereas during the month of November and Veterans Day, we give recognition and respect to the Blue Star families of our veterans and warriors for the sacrifices they have made. Their continued support is imperative to the continued success of their warriors struggle to overcome the adversities of war mentally and physically. And whereas during the month of November and Veterans Day, we honor our Gold Star families who have sacrificed the ultimate Keep them in your prayers. They will forever carry the legacy of their loved one through memories. And whereas during the month of November and Veterans Day, we take time to reflect on a 20 year war that has affected so many warriors, veterans and their families. Many have lost precious time watching their children grow. Children had to suffer through years of not having their father or mother around to overseas tours resulting in many children being raised in single parent households due to multiple deployments, while other family units suffered breakups after years of continuous separation. And whereas during the month of November and Veterans Day, we continue to be cognizant of the mental and physical injuries our warriors and veterans continue to struggle with daily. We as a nation owe them a debt of gratitude and we must continue to provide services to help them overcome the diversities of war they endured. And whereas during the month of November and Veterans Day, we renew our commitment to our children through guidance and education, the importance of honor, respect, and appreciation for the valor and sacrifice of our veterans and warriors have made. We must continue to educate them on history of this great nation. Now, therefore, we, the Select Board of North Reading, do hereby proclaim November to be Veterans and Military Families Appreciation Month and observe Veterans Day on the 11th day of November, 2021 with appropriate ceremony and prayer in honor of our veterans and warriors whose steadfast desire through valor and sacrifice preserve the principles of justice, freedom and democracy. We shall take the time to reflect and remember our heroes and their families 
for all the sacrifice they have made in order to keep our homeland safe. We encourage you to continue to display the American flag of pride on your homes, offices, and town buildings. Given at the select board meeting this 18th day of October, 2021 by select board chair, Catherine Manupelli. Okay, any other comment, question? Good? That's good. All right, thank you, Mrs. Magna, for joining us and giving that PSA for the, the, the veterans event as well. Um, and so we'll look forward to, to the next events with you. All right. Thank you so much. I, you're welcome. I got all your emails, so we'll be, I'll be in touch with you soon with tickets. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. All right. And our next order of business is the 2020 re-precincting plan for the town of North Reading and a vote to accept the plan. And we have with us our town clerk, Barbara Stats. Welcome, Madam Thank Clerk. You. We're going to turn it over to you. All right. Well, first of all, I, I, I want to express my condolences too regarding Rosalie Sr., the passing of her. I had not heard, so um, I'm deeply saddened by that. She was a good member of this board for, for many years and uh, contributed very greatly. So um, moving on, this is the um, culmination of the decennial census of 2020, um, just as a recap for the public perhaps, um, as you know, this takes place every decade on the decade and uh, following the official tabulation of population, it comes down to the local communities accepting the figures and um, in some instances, increasing precincts within, um, perhaps decreasing and adjusting precinct boundaries. Um, on the uh, national level, these figures are used to establish the population for the country for the decade. And they do affect um, the number of representatives in Congress that are allotted to each state. Um, they set the state legislative districts and uh, uh, many other things, including uh, funding for various hundreds of various uh, federal programs uh, throughout uh, monies distributed to all of the states. So the um, impact of the federal census is very widespread. It affects a lot of different things. But on the local level, it comes down to this board uh, and every uh, select board uh, in the Commonwealth to accept the um, figures, the precinct map, and the description of the precinct boundaries and the block voting districts. So as you have seen in my memo, um, North Reading, uh, our population increased based on the federal census figures by 652. Excuse me, Ma Madam Clerk, can you, I just want, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but Mr. Gilberta, do you think you can mute everybody because there's a really, someone has a couple of devices going and there's a strong echo there. Yes, I just, just said, okay, thank you. All right, so um, our population locally increased by 662 from 10 years ago, according to the census figures. And, um, Normally we would be adjusting precinct lines to accommodate that. No single precinct can have more than 4,000 residents and each precinct must be within a 5% variance of population from one another. So um, miraculously this year, North Reading's um, increase in population was able to be absorbed within the existing precinct boundaries, which is the first time in my history here that that has happened, that we do not have to shift any um, precinct boundaries and uh, all of the uh, residents will not be affected. Uh, nothing is affected for us here in North Reading. It, it's truly remarkable for this year. 
So what this board needs to do is to um, accept the, um, the 2020 reprecincting plan for the town of North Reading, which includes the precinct map, which was part of the packet I sent to you, the precinct boundary descriptions, and the voter uh, districts by block. Each uh, precinct has various numerous blocks that are coded, geocoded by the Census Bureau. We don't do that on the local level. And they uh, determine the number of uh, residents in each block and cumulatively uh, within each precinct then. So once the board does accept this plan, then I will forward it to the local election, state local election districts review commission, and they will have, they are constantly, or they are on have, having ongoing meetings right now with various uh, plans that have been already approved and they have the final approval. And once they do approve it, then these boundaries and the precincts will stay in effect for another 10 years till the next decennial census is conducted. And they, are, they do become effective on December 31st of this year. So we're on a little bit of a tight time frame this, this year because the decennial census continued for a few months, I think last year. And so um, while communities, local communities are doing their own local re-precincting on a state level. They are also drawing new state district lines and representative district lines at the same time, which usually takes place after the approvals of the local communities. So for North Reading, it doesn't really affect us from what I've seen in the state uh, um, district lines and the representative district lines, there is nothing changed for North Reading um, state-wise, you know, certainly not locally. So this, this is the final step for us here. Okay. All right, do we have any questions? Do the members have any questions? Mr. Walner? Uh, no. No, Mr. Studo? None. Mrs. Gonzalez? Mr. O'Leary? Oh, nope, thank you. Okay. All right. So do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to accept as presented by the town clerk the 2020 reprint, reprint, yeah, <laughs> precincting plan for the town of North Riding Mass, including the approved map, pre precinct, boundary descriptions, and block listings. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All, oh, all right, Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Okay, the, one more thing is that I will need to have each of you come into the office to sign this letter that needs to go to the um, state for approval of this plan. So um, I would like to see if I can just uh, submit it by the end of this week, as I believe that they are meeting perhaps next week again and we can get our plan approved by them. So if each member of the board could just call me to just make sure that I'm in and uh, come in to sign in my presence, I would appreciate that very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll be in touch with you. All right, I appreciate it. Go um, Red Sox, okay? <laughs> is that tonight? Yeah, it is. That's tonight, so let's step it up here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be watching now. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, thank, you for the, thank you for that very complete, as usual, presentation. Very helpful. Have a, have a good night. You as well. All right. So I, uh, oh, Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, just uh, before we move on, uh, I'm being told that there was an issue getting tonight's meeting um, up live on the Government Access Channel. So for those of you who were trying to tune in, um, NORCAM was aware of the issue. 
um, they believe uh, that it has been uh, corrected and we are now streaming live on government access. So we apologize for any inconvenience. And you'll have a, because the town is recording it as well, um, well, you'll have a, you can probably post the link to the town's recording or put the link up there too, Mr. Gilberto. Uh, yes, uh, it started uh, maybe 30 seconds after we started the meeting, but yes, there is a recording. Okay. All right. Okay, so I must, for the next order of business, turn the chair over to Mrs. Gonzalez and recuse myself from Matt, the Matt. discussion. Yes, Mr. Gilberto. I'm sorry, but we, we're not able to start the hearing until eight o'clock. I don't know if you want to take up any other Perfect. items. Perfect. You know, sure. we'll keep moving. <laughs> let's, because uh, I think the investment policy is going to be a bit. So the first reason. So let's try, let's jump to appointments. Perfect. That seems to be something we can resolve rather quickly. All right, Mr. Studo, do you have a list of um, agenda item number seven? A motion. Yep, there's one. There's just one person mm -hmm. that I have listed. Madam Chair, I move to appoint the following individual to the Facilities Master Plan Committee for the terms and positions stated below. Warren Pierce, TPC, through May 3rd, 2022. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call name vote. Mr. Studo. Warren Pierce. Mr. Walner. Warren Pierce. Mr. O'Leary. Warren Pierce. Mrs. Gonzalez. Warren Pierce. And Manny Pelli is Warren Pierce. Do we have any motion for a process server? Madam Chair. Okay, Mr. Gilbert. I saw in the packet, but Mr. Gilbert, well, there's none at the present time, correct? There, there is. A, I believe that. I believe that there is a motion that there, there isn't, and I think we should take one up. But I, I wanted to speak before it was offered, to be just in advance for Mr. Sudo, who will be making the motion, and whoever else is going to second it. But there will be a, a recommendation not to appoint at this time for the candidate. So I just want to say that before someone reads the motion and then wonders why it's a pro it's more process than anything else um you're the appointing authority only you can appoint or not appoint um so okay. that's the reason why it's still coming up sure and we typically go but based upon the recommendation of the individuals who have investigated the applicant and yes. we did see in the packet there was a recommendation not to proceed at this time due to an incomplete incomplete information correct is that kind of a summary Mr. that's a great summary yes alberto okay so is there a motion, Mr. Studo? I don't, I didn't see it in the packet. I'm yes, sorry. there is, but it's to a point. So should I just amend it? Uh, uh, what uh, I is, is, a, is there, a, Madam Chair, if I might, is, is there a need to bring it up if we're, if we're not, if we don't feel as though we have sufficient information to make a full informed decision or should we just, you know, table it or postpone it to another meeting? Or are we just moving on? Yeah, we're, do, we, do we have a requirement to, well, I think if you if we if we take a motion on on appointing and the and and I'm not I don't I can't if just saying the motion is denied that would that that's the end of that I don't think the individual can come back until the individual meets the qualifications or you know meets the requirements is that right Mr. Gilberto. That, that was my uh, intention um, based upon how we previously have handled something we had this apprehension on. Okay, so in other words, it's a yes or a no vote and that sort of uh, concludes, the, concludes the review process for the applicant, at so least the, at this time. The best I can recommend given the structure, yes. Okay. I mean, I, I mean any motion can be made obviously. Uh, and so sure, I, but, sure. Okay, so what's the board's pleasure? Do you wanna move forward or do you wanna table this or what would you like to do? Well, we've seen the, in the packet, the review and the investigation and- Well, as a liaison to the constables, um, I am recommending, not recommending um, the appointment. So I, I guess we could vote on that. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gonzalez, I should have had asked for your input. Um, so Mrs. Gonzalez, that, that you want, do, your recommendation is to proceed to the vote? Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not recommending. Okay. Okay. 
I can give, I can go into more detail with that if anybody wants me to, why, what I think you have in the packet, there was incomplete, um, it was an incomplete application. There was, there were some issues. Okay. Just to, to Mr. O'Leary. Do we find it necessary to uh, publicly mention somebody's name and not move forward on the on the application uh, if that's what the recommendation is going to be and the majority of the board is inclined to do so if that's the case why would we even take it up and just you know have the administration respond back to the applicant that it seems to be insufficient information not moving to, forward. to move forward at this time you know okay. unless the administrator is telling us that there's a need for us to um, there's pressure on us to make this decision publicly. Um, why would we do it? True. Yeah, true. I mean, it doesn't make sense to me to move to appoint someone where we don't. If 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 it's the pleasure of the board not to appoint, why would we move move to appoint? Um, I don't know what the board is. Five of us. I don't know what the board's pleasure is, but you know, Mr. Gilbert, if you can explain the sense of doing that. I, I'm trying to find a way to, to get to the outcome that we're recommending. And, and so one thing I could suggest is to, um, to to take no action on pending constable applications. Then we could make a vote. I could notify the candidate that no action was taken and encourage them to, to reapply in the future. Okay. I don't, I don't know how else to, without, because I, I share the concern. I think Mrs. Gonzalez and I both share the concern that's been been brought up. We're not looking to harm anybody, but we're not recommending recommending moving forward at this time either. Okay. What's the board's pleasure? Do you want to move forward to a vote, or do you want to just take no action and and authorize the uh, TA to inform the applicant we're not taking action on the application? I think we should just entertain a motion to. Um... Uh, to table any further action on process serving constables at this time. Okay, so we have a motion. My motion by Mr. O'Leary. Do we have a second? Second. Motion by Mr. O'Leary not to take any action on uh, constable applications for the present time. Second by Mr. Studo. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. And so Mr. Gilberto, you would notify the applicant that we're not taking an action on the application. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so that actually brings us to the 8 p.m. And as I started to say, I, I um, going to recuse myself from this and turn the chair over to Mrs. Gonzalez. And this is because I had a, a family member that worked for Dos Lobos um, recently, uh, you know, actually during pandemic to pandemic time and before it closed. So I, I don't want to, you know, I want to avoid any issue of conflict. Okay, so I'm going to Shut the lights and the camera off. Okay, so we have a public hearing. Dos Lobos LLC DBA Apothecary Ells Brewery. Um, I'll read the public notice. Uh, in accordance with Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Laws, a public hearing will be held by the Select Board on Monday, October 18, 2021 via virtual technology at 8 p.m. on the application of Dos Lobos LLC DBA Hippothecary Ales Brewery and Kitchen for an alteration of premises for the common victualler all alcoholic beverage license exercised at 303 Main Street, North Reading, Mass. License to be exercised in an area of approximately 6,039 square feet in the interior with three season porch area, two bars, six means of egress, kitchen and storage on west side of the building, and approximately 977 square feet of outdoor patio area, 
The hearing may also potentially be held in person in room 14. Please refer to the calendar on the town website when the select board agenda for this meeting is posted for further information. Um, the virtual hearing may also be accessed by the internet, Zoom, via telephone. Um, okay, is, it, uh, is there anybody here representing? Uh, yes. Uh, Jim, uh, Jim Beats. Okay. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez and board members, Attorney John Cannell from Upton, Connell and Devlin representing the applicant, Dos Lobos LLC. Okay. <clears throat> All right, would you like to go ahead? Yes, uh, Ms. Gonzalez. Uh, the applicant is applying to add a three season room, a covered porch, approximately 595 square feet and a portion of the patio to its existing section 12 all alcoholic beverage pouring license. Uh, it's pretty much that simple. We've provided a diagram. We don't expect the anything else about the interior of the, uh, of the restaurant to change. And uh, we're looking forward to getting open. Okay. Um, do any, it, it, would anybody else like to add anything? From, okay. Do any of the members have questions? Just so we only want to inquire if anybody from the public has any comment. Oh, I see a hand. You're you're muted, Mister. I just I just unmuted now. Can you hear me? Arredero, yes, okay. yes, we can. Uh, I was just wondering. Uh, on you're going to have an outdoor. It's going to be outdoor area. It's going to be loudspeakers and a band or anything out there. I'm wondering what the noise levels are going to be outside. Just for the record, though, could you state your name and address, sir? Uh, Anthony Caridio, 3 Brooks Road, North Reading. Thank you. Mr. Dietz, would you like to field that question? Sure. Um, yeah, it will be the same operation as it was pre-existing with Dos Lobos. I think it was told to us about 9 p.m. is where the noise ordinance comes into play. Um, I, we, there are some speakers outside. Um, I could see maybe possibly during the day some entertainment, but we would be keeping with that noise ordinance that we were told as Dos Lobos, you know, we feel the no complaints then. We don't anticipate doing anything other than we did as a previous owner at Dos, Dos Lobos. Right, so there's generally been outdoor music all along as Dos Lobos and uh, live bands outside or just speakers? Just speakers. We've never done a live band outside. Okay, and I rode by and I saw the speakers. They didn't seem to be too big. Are you adding a bigger speaker system or just the smaller speakers that are there? We have uh, just the speakers that are currently there are tied are going to be tied in, and we actually are making an adjustment. As Dos Lobos, there was a one two zones. We're adding a third zone for outdoor, so we can turn that off or dial the temperature down specifically. So hopefully we'll be able to handle even better than we did as Dos Lobos. But we feel the no complaints as Dos Lobos either. And the, what are the operating hours of the establishment? Uh, they haven't been established yet, but I would say um, probably to some point till 9.30 during weekdays, up to 10.30, 11 at week, weekends. But again, I just want to say we haven't established those. They'll be in compliance with our current um, licensing and the town. Okay. Okay, Mr. Cardier, are you all, are you all set? I'm all set. Thank you. Anybody else from the public like to make a comment or ask a question? You can use the raise hand. Do you see anything, Mr. Gilberto? I do not. Okay, so I will turn to my colleagues. Any questions? Mr. O'Leary? So when do you anticipate opening? <laughs> it's overdue. Uh, it's overdue. Uh, it's, yeah, it's very much overdue. We're really hoping to be open before Thanksgiving. Uh, we're going right now. We're trying to get all of the uh, permits closed and then board of health inspection and then training and hiring. And if all that goes well, hopefully before Thanksgiving. Yeah, I just want to comment that, you know, the operations that you run there uh, up to, to date has been a uh, fine establishment. We appreciate you staying and making the investment here and wish you nothing but success. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Wellman? 
my biggest concern also was just the noise at night outside, but seeing that there's no neighbors here to say that there's been noise. <clears throat> so I know at the very beginning, four or five years ago, there was complaints about it, but apparently that's been put under control. So there's no complaints, you know, um, good luck and I hope that you're very successful. Thank you. As far as I can know, those complaints were when it was owned by Great American Tavern. Um, wow. That concern was brought up to us when we opened Dos Lobos. And um, I, I think I don't I, I don't know of any complaints that we received as our current our current operation. Yeah, good. Thank you for doing that. No problem. Mr. Studo, you are all set. OK, um, do you plan on um, using heaters out on the porch, Mr. Dietz? Are you going to have people outside during the winter months of the extended time or? Uh, not this winter, no. Um, we might look to go do that, you know, next year. Um, but it's by design, it's supposed to be kind of in with that three season patio. Okay, great. All right. Um, so I guess we'll take a vote. We're taking a vote on that, Mr. Mueller. Madam, Madam Vice Chair, I move to approve an alteration of premises for a common and particular all alcohol beverage license for Dos Lobos. LLC, DBA, about the Curry Ales Brewery and Kitchen, 303 Main Street, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Studo. I have a second by Mr. O'Leary, and we will do a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Studo? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. And Ms. Minya Kelly is recused and Gonzalez is I. Congratulations and best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you for your comments, Mr. Cadero. Okay, I'm gonna take a slight recess so we can bring the chair back in. I wonder if our water pumps will be the new source of sound <laughs> coming from there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put the speakers near it. <laughs> Sorry about that one second. Okay. All right. I will turn the meeting back over to the chair. Oh, too bad the Red Sox aren't playing every evening. That was fast. Okay. <laughs> Let's go on to the next order of business, which is to a first reading of the investment policy. Mr. Gilberto. <laughs> I don't know if you want to speak to this or introduce it, Mr. Gilberto, if you just want us to go right to the reading of it. Madam Chair, I'm sorry, but your audio cut out briefly, so I didn't hear what you said up until, up until you, you said my name. <laughs> oh, I said, I can you hear me now? Yes, yep. I don't know if you want to make any introductory remarks to this or if you'd prefer us to just go right into the reading of the, of the investment policy. I would just give a, a few remarks. Uh, I'll briefly turn to the finance director, and I don't know whether she would oh, want to okay. refer to the to the chair or the committee. But I, I want to recognize um, members of the trustees of trust funds who have been very active over the the past um, six or seven years with getting things in order regarding our trust funds, and there are many of them. Um, with regularly re regularly reporting to you and I, Madam Chair, with regard to their uh, the balances of the funds. And um, they're, you know, they're they're recommending a next step uh, of a, a formal investment policy um, regarding um, the funds that are under their purview. Um, they've developed a policy uh, in consultation with the finance director and the town treasurer, Marianne McKay, who was also on this call. The members of the committee um, are Dallas Kaufman, Sarah Allen McGoldrick, and Gene Osborne, who are all here this evening. So I appreciate them uh, them joining us as well. Um, and through you, Madam Chair, I will turn over to the finance director. Sure. Ms. Rourke. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, Good evening. Uh, so as uh, the town administrator mentioned, um, the trustees of the trust funds are, you know, very much um, 
deeply involved with our trust funds that are under their peer review and, um, you know, into the weeds, if you will, um, getting down into, uh, you know, small pieces of information um, with their, their knowledge and their backgrounds. And it's been very helpful to myself and to um, the town uh, treasurer collector, you know, for this, um, this committee, you know, board um, to have. And we've been working um, with them, trying to go back and forth, trying to figure out, you know, who can develop, who's responsible for what trust funds, a um, multitude of things, kind of untangling things as things have evolved over the years. And um, then they uh, took it under, you know, their assignment to develop the investment policy for the trust funds that they are responsible for. And, um, you know, they have been underway with this um, for quite some time. And so, it's really great to see that this has finally come to fruition. Um, and, you know, we hope that uh, and welcome your, your feedback, but I would turn it over to the trustees of the trust funds to um, speak a little bit about it uh, as they are the ones that uh, developed uh, this policy in conjunction and advisement with the town treasurer. Um, I had very little very little input as, as it wasn't necessary. So um, I, I will turn it, if, I don't know if Marianne, the, the treasurer collector wants to say anything um, before the trustees, um, but that's up to you, Madam Chair. Sure. Would you like, welcome. Would you like to make any, well, would you like to make any additional comment? Yes, thank you. I would just like to say, I would like to um, thank Dallas, Jean and Sarah for all the work that they have done. Um, to finally get this policy into effect. It's been a couple of years that they've been working on it. And with all their efforts, I just wanted to say thank you very much for getting us to where we are today. Okay. Thank you. And is there any, are there any right now, Mr. Gilberto? Would one of the trustees be willing to sort of just summarize the, yes. what they thought the need was and what the policy will do? Or just a, the major, uh, I think, I know the motion is to waive the reading, but we should really go over, you know, at least a brief explanation of each of the sections of the policy. Is there anyone that would like to? Mr. Kaufman, welcome. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Um, and we've uh, worked, we're all, the three of us are uh, kind of beside ourselves where we finally are having this this first reading, it has been a long road indeed. Um, and, and in the interest of time and go Red Sox, I'd like to just recite a few tidbits from our cover letter that accompanied the investment policy statement. And by way of background, uh, uh, pursuant to mass general laws, without an investment policy statement, our investment advisor, and that being Bartholomew and Company, who, who does this for well over 100 different towns and municipalities throughout the Commonwealth, uh, they are restricted from investing outside of certain constraints. Those constraints are 90% fixed income, 10% on an approved list of equities. So you might say it's really, really, really conservative. Um, I'm, I'm in the business myself as uh, alongside Mr. Studo, he and I, I believe are with the same firm, but um, it's pretty easy to get to the point where these accounts are not growing. And in fact, after the, I, I believe it's uh, 50 basis points, one half of 1% per year fee that Bartholomew charges, which by the way is, if it's not reasonable, it's inexpensive. Um, and then inflation, we're, we're losing ground uh, from year to year. And, and as, a, as a result, um, we, we did a look back in over four years and from 2000, 2016 to 2019, the investment portfolios actually lost over $8,000 in value. And as a consequence, we were unable to make 
several awards from scholarships that, you know, that's why we're here. So, and we, we've done a whole bunch of work, and this is really the only thing left on our plate, uh, to create an investment policy statement that, with your approval, of course, will permit Bartholomew and company to have a much wider range of investment options open to them, and therefore they could utilize those, those new options to uh, grow the portfolio much better than they've been able to in the past. And I think uh, this policy, the, the draft that we've put before you um, accomplishes that. And I, I will credit my two co-trustees, Gene Osborne and Sarah, Sarah uh, McGoldrick. Uh, these were, uh, our, the, the, the draft that we put before you was a conglomeration of research that we received, we sought out and received uh, from Cohasset, Lexington, Lincoln, Littleton, Reading, and Topsfield. So we, we wanted to open our eyes and say, okay, what are all these towns doing and how can we craft this thing to fit North Reading as well as we can? And I thank you for your time and we're here to answer any questions. Great, thank you, Mr. Kaufman. Okay, to, to my colleagues, are there any questions at least at the first reading? Mr. Studo? Uh, I couldn't have said any better myself and I probably couldn't have, um, but I totally agree. Uh, the times have changed, where interest rates are gonna be has changed. I mean, I think this is a bigger issue, I mean, we can only really experiment with this pool of money being more adoptive to where money is going. But I think uh, in general, this will allow the trustees and through Bartholomew, Bartholomew Inc. to actually grow the money rather than just, you know, watch it sit there and hope that uh, interest rates, well, nominal interest rates go up a lot higher than they will in the next few years. So I'm totally supportive of it. And I think it's very long overdue. And, you know, by some miracle, we could ever, ever get the state to change the rules for the general obligation funds we have, that would be, you know, great too. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Studo. Mr. Walder? Just a question. There's supposed to be an exhibit A that shows how much is in the portfolio, but I don't see an exhibit A. How much is in, how much of how much money are we looking at? Is there anyone that can answer this? Any anyone that can answer that? Is there an exhibit A? I think he's looking it up. Okay. There is an exhibit A. I think the final version that was uh, revised didn't include it, but I'm sure Dallas can put his hands on it and uh, answer that question faster than we can. You can go to other questions. I just like to get that number by the end. Thank you. Okay, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, yeah, I'm blowing it up here. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we, That's I was, all right. I wasn't sure if you had it, Mr. Kaufman. I am, Technology I'm sorry. is a great thing. Um, I thank you, uh, Mr. Studo, for your discussion on interest rates, and that that continues to to hamper performance significantly. Uh, we've limited the funds that uh, would be subject to this investment policy statement um, to exclude funds that, although we we kind of have some oversight, we have very little oversight. It's more of a reporting function. Um, so we we are not including the, any of the DPW trust funds in the investment policy statement, uh, but we are including the balance of them. And so at the end of 2020, we're looking at, a, it's in the neighborhood of a million dollars, the total portfolio that, that would be subject to the investment policy statement. Okay. And, and that, you know, that could be plus or minus 150,000, depending upon the no, day. Because when you said the 8,000 from before, I was kind of figuring it was a little bit smaller than I might have imagined. So is the intent to expand this out to other funds? Or are we just going to settle, settle on this for right now? Or I have no idea how big a scope this might turn out to be. Oh, um, well, I can answer that. So we, we, we have grouped the funds under our purview uh, into four, five, or six different categories. I'll just recite them for your, for your convenience. 
the DPW trust funds are really revolving trust funds that the director of public works uh, handles. And those are valued at about 41,000. The library has five different trust funds for about 54,000. Uh, we have miscellaneous trust funds, including the 150th anniversary fund, the Walter Flint School Fund, and a couple others. Those are 17,000. But the, the big pot that we are most active with are the scholarship trust funds. I'm going to guess there's 15 to 20 of those. And those are um, right about at a million bucks. So everything but the DPW. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Mr. O'Leary, any questions? Uh, yeah, just, you know, no, just a comment again. I'd like to uh, note my appreciation for the effort that's been put into this and uh, the opportunities that it's going to present to the community uh, to grow these funds. So uh, again, without the, the policy, it's extremely restrictive. And uh, it just makes a heck of a lot of sense. And again, I appreciate all the research that's been done by the trustees and the effort that's been put into it. And um, I, I hope to see the community reap the benefits. So thank you again for your efforts and for bringing it forward. Thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Mrs. Gonzalez? Yeah, I will echo Mr. O'Leary. Um, thank you for your insight and thank you for all your hard work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this is a, a first reading. We had we do have the policy. We do have uh, time to consider it because we'll have a second reading if there's anything else that the board, as it considers this policy, believes should be incorporated into the policy. So I believe the motion is, uh, Ms. Sister, can you read the motion? It's to waive the reading. But it's to approve it's, the first reading of the policies and waive the reading of the entire policy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the board has to read it because there may be more input that the board wants to provide between now and the second reading. Okay, so Mr. Studer, do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve the first reading of the policy of the trustees of trust funds policy and to waive the reading of the entire policy, which I've read. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Mr. Studer means he pers has personally read the policy. I read it too. Okay. Motion by Mr. Studer, second by? Myself. Mr. O'Leary, any further discussion? Seeing none at the moment, Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. And thank you all for joining us and, provi thank and you. providing your input and also for the work leading up to this. Okay, our next order of business is the to review the list of committee appointments to be advertised. This one's for you, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in accordance with the board's policy, we're uh, reviewing with the board the vacancies that are upcoming. And uh, I presented it to the board, both in the form of the, the large ad that we would be uh, submitting um, later this month as well as a detailed listing from our online board and, and, and committee information system of which positions, the exact positions that are, are being becoming vacant. So we just wanted to review this with the, uh, the board ahead of, of advertising it. Um, you, you see in the packet um, on your policy that there is a, um, that there is a policy relative to it. And uh, I'm just gonna point you to the page, uh, it's page 126. Um, and we're kind of on, on the, under section 3.2, the assessment of committee, and then we'll go forward with an, a, an advertisement. And uh, you should know we do ask candidates, and I think you've all been contacted by either Jen or Karen in the office, um, um, advising that we're reaching out to candidates to see if they wish to be reappointed as well. So that, that happens on a parallel course. And in the end, the appointments are brought to the board, either new appointments or reappointments in the, the meetings in December. Okay, any questions? None. 
Mrs. Gonzalez, are you all set? I am. All set. Mr. Stewart, all set? Mr. Walner? Yep, all set. Mr. O'Leary? All set, thank you. All right, next order of business is legal bills. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for August 2021 in the amount of $11,245.38 as follows. General, $41,7288. Labor, $40,79.50. 20 Elm Street, $29.93. For a total of $11,245.38. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further? I'm sorry. Mr. Gilberto, did you have anything to add? Okay. Awesome. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Okay. Next. Order of business. There, yes. there, are, there are multiple bills, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Madam Chair, I move to approve a bill for Elizabeth Numar, arbitrator in the amount of 3300 Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve invoice number 11417 in the amount of 69,334 to Furman Gregory Deptula for legal services for the secondary school building project litigation. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Emilia Pelli is aye. That's it. Is that all set? <laughs> okay. All right, we're gonna move, move on to Minutes. Madam Chair, I move to approve the August 16, 2021 regular session minutes as amended. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? I have two. Um, if there's none from my colleagues, I have two corrections uh, with regard to the minutes. Uh, the first is on page 10 of the minutes. There's a, is a, there's a typo, um, at least in terms of the comments that I made. And it, and it should read grant versus brand. The second um, clarification or portion that I think should be corrected is on page 13 where Mr. Studo's comments are being reflected as joking. Um, and I think the characterization of comment is not appropriate for the minutes. If it's reflecting his statements, it should just reflect his statements and not characterizing what his, how he's made them. So I'd ask my uh, colleagues to consider amending the minutes, at least in those two regards prior to voting or if I make a motion if I can, or he ask for a motion to amend. And then my third issue is at the end, it references me asking my colleagues to sign a document, but does not list that document. So that if that is, if the end of the meeting, when we're finishing our administrative tasks, if, if I've asked, you to sign the document and that's now going to be incorporated into our minutes, then the clerk needs to list the document that I've asked you to sign in the minutes themselves. I think it was a, we were doing some administrative tasks as we were approving things and we were signing things. So if that's now going to be part of me asking you to sign, those documents should be listed. I don't actually remember what it was, 
but I just know that in the minutes it wasn't listed. I don't recall either, Madam Chair. I apologize. And we could probably figure it out and either incorporate it or bring it back to the board. Right. So do you want to table these until that time? Okay. So I, I moved to table. With, okay. with regard to, thank you. Mo, I mean, I'm not supposed to move, but I'd ask for, I'd ask for us to just table it if that's okay. We don't usually vote on that, but if, if someone could move to table them, I guess. If no, move to table. The table, which ones? All for the yeah. August 16th? Yes. Uh, so motion, motion by Mr. O'Leary. Do I'll I have a second? second? I'll second. second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Okay, um, Mr. Studo, any further Aye. discussion? Mr. Studo, Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Emmanuel Pelli is aye. I'm gonna ask a, a, a tabling motion too for the executive session for that evening. Again, because of the, without getting into the content, um, just in a broad sense, characterizations of our comments, I don't think are appropriate. If the recitation is what our comments is, it should be limited to that and not characterizing our feelings or what, you know, characterizing the comments. Um, so I would ask if the members can uh, move to table until we make some of those amendments. Second. No, I, I can't. I can't make like the motion. So, so move. So move. <laughs> I'll second. And by Mr. O'Leary, seconded ahead of time in advance by Mr. Studo. Mr. Okay, Studo. Yes. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. I have other, I, I just want to say before we take the vote, I have other, I can point the, my colleagues to the specific sections of the corrections I believe that need to be made, uh, unless you. I know where you're talking about for mine. I don't care, fine. But I mean, for the next minutes as well. And I'm, I'm sorry to do this on the floor, but I have promised our clerk that I would go back and make these corrections and I, I simply haven't had the time and it's getting to the point where we're required to make these, we're required to take action on these and it, it's really my delay in not getting back to our clerk on these things. So do you have some suggestions on each one of the other minutes? Um, I do for the uh, regular, the regular session of September 8th. Um, if, if, the, if I can make those now. Well, I, I, yeah, we just don't need to entertain the motion. We, oh, okay. have, if you're okay with the executive session, everybody else is too. And whatever and other ones, we'll just vote on the ones that we, we're okay with and leave the other ones for, for the meeting. So yeah. the, the, I, I'm not sure how this board handles an after the vote amendment to the minutes. I think it's best to table them until we have it cl clarified. And I have the same... Um, I have some same clarifications for both regular and executive session minutes. Well, and if, which was September 8th, the 20th and October 4th? Yes. And if, if I if I can make a promise to my colleagues that by the next meeting, I'll have all of those <laughs> clarifications to the clerk so we don't waste any more time on this. Madam Chair, I move to table minutes for September 8th, regular executive session, September 20th, regular executive session, and October 4th, regular executive session. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. O'Leary, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mrs. Manupelli? I say yes. I'm asking myself. I'm looking up. I'm so sorry because she's I'm not, about to responding. say she's I'm sorry to, to the clerk for not and my colleagues for not. I simply did not have a moment's time to sift through these until you know in between two meetings today to be able to get to some of it. So and I didn't have time to connect with the clerk and she has been reaching out to me repetitively. So I'm sorry to the clerk. All right, so I promise you by our next meeting, this will be, this will, this will be done. <laughs> Something happened to the volume. 
something happened to your volume. Yeah, it just decreased. Um, that's strange. Okay, I think. The, can you hear me now? We can hear you. It just went down. That's fine. I think. I think I got a comment. That's why. All right. So let's move on to the town administrator. Thank you to my colleagues and thank you to the clerk. Let's move on to the town administrator's report, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wish to inform the board that the town planner and I are intending to apply for uh, state community compact best practices funding. Um, this is a, a program that we've taken advantage of uh, numerous times over the past six years. They're generally relatively small grants in the amount of fifteen to thirty-five thousand dollars. But there are two projects that we've looked that we're looking at submitting applications for. One is for our municipal wastewater system financing and assessment study. We think that we can um, defray the cost to the taxpayer here, excuse me, to the town through uh, the appropriation that was approved at the town meeting two weeks ago by um, getting some funding to offset that cost. So we're gonna put in an application for, uh, we hope $35,000 to go against that hundred plus thousand dollar expense. And the second item is something that I know came up when Reading Municipal Light Department was before us over the summer, which is that there is an availability for a grant to help us uh, further explore the Green Communities Program. It's a program that the state offers to um, assist and incentivize communities to reduce their uh, energy consumption, particularly in, the, in their, in their uh, overall electricity consumption. And there are um, some resources that are out there. But um, it, it's an involved program and there are some responsibilities that the community would take on if it were to go down that path. So uh, our feeling is if we can get the state to help us look further at it and bring, bring you some, some information to make a decision about this program, all the better for us. Um, so we're hoping to submit an application um, for assistance from the state in that program as well. And I believe that is all from my um, comments this evening. Anyone have any questions for Mr. O'Leary? Uh, no, Gilbert. all set. All right. Maybe, maybe I, Mr. I, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Gilberto. I was going to jump to Mr. O'Leary, but I have two questions for Mr. Gilberto with respect to the RMLD. When they came to us over the summertime, they gave us a presentation of their shift of um, shift down to the, you know, their green efforts to 2030 or 2032. And they made a presentation that they said would be made available to us. Mm -hmm. And have they provided that? And where can that, the, where can people in the town see that? I believe that they provided it, but it's not posted on the website. So we can get it posted up there. We'll put it on town news, which is available right from the, the homepage. Okay. And that second thing that you are discussing with regard to the community compact, is that in reference to the, the, um, the, gr the group community agreement for them that we all would then be required to make a co an annual contribution towards, I mean, each community? We, we would ask to look at that as well as the overarching requirements under the program and what we think the implications might be for the town in order to remain compliant in the program. So, so for us, there's two pieces of that discussion. There's the state's requirements, and then as you identify the corresponding impacts um, for other member communities. Um, keep in mind the town, I, I believe, believe it was Reading, was looking at potentially going down that path as well. They're doing so independently, but I think RMLD did a highlight that there may be an impact regardless of what decision we make based upon what Reading uh, chooses to do. That's, so, I, remember, I recall that as well during the presentation. So we would be on our own course, but looking at a relevant issue. Okay. So the, the soliciting of the grant is just to look into the impact. It's not for purposes of paying what would be our town's obligation um, to that uh, contribution, that joint community contribution. Okay. That's correct. It's for purely evaluated in the program. Okay. All right. Any other, is everyone else all set? We'll move, we'll move on to all board member reports and old and new business. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, several things to report on Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I'd like to um, acknowledge and, and inform the board that uh, associate member of the Conservation Commission, John Lape, uh, is going to be, uh, if he hasn't already submitted his, his resignation, because he's going to be moving out of town to California, a long distance from North Reading, uh, to be with his family and grandchildren. And uh, John has served uh, extremely 
well and an active member of the uh, Conservation Commission for a number of years, and he's going to be sorely missed, and his service is greatly appreciated. And we wish he and Mary, again, who's also, I believe, in library trustees, uh, all the best in their big move across the country uh, to be closer to their uh, family members and, um, again, appreciate the, the service to the community. Uh, so we'll be looking for associate member of the Conservation Commission, but uh, to John and Mary, again, we appreciate uh, uh, all that they've done over the years, uh, not just in the current capacity, but uh, service to the community in the past. So I uh, wish them nothing but uh, good health and an easy move, I guess. You know, I hope, I hope getting rid of this stuff at home here isn't too tough. But again, uh, thank you to, uh, to John and Mary. Um, let's see. Wastewater. I just want to acknowledge uh, the support that we received from town meeting um, uh, last week, uh, the overwhelming support for the efforts that we've been putting forth. And uh, the subcommittee has been meeting, will continue to meet, and we'll be moving forward expeditiously to, uh, to get the answers that we're seeking. And again, I was uh, very pleased with, with the, uh, the response that we got. And uh, I think the community is looking forward to the information. And uh, again, just want to thank uh, people that came out and tell me the support. I think it's so important for us to move forward. Uh, same with the vocational school. You know, uh, unanimous support uh, for the expansion of the vocational school sends a clear message to the other communities uh, that are involved, the other 11 communities that are not threatening. It's very supportive and um, really want to see it move forward. So again, much appreciation there. Board of Health, again, they're still pretty busy. Um, first of all, the uh, board needs to be informed, and I think town administrator mentioned the last meeting, but uh, Donna Hubby, our public health nurse, is, uh, is resigning and, and moving on to uh, get her uh, uh, doctorate. Uh, Stephanie Conley, who has been the glue uh, for the Board of Health, is, is uh, just moving across the hall, across town hall. But for what she's done over the last 18 months uh, for the community, uh, it's not readily seen, but uh, uh, I tell you, she, she's done a fantastic job and congratulations on her new appointment. Um, but she's gonna be missed by the Board of Health for sure. Uh, just in relation to uh, where we are in the community, uh, Board of Health has reported that um, we have 71% of the community, uh, ages 12 and, and above, uh, with at least one dose and 66% uh, of the community have been fully vaccinated. So those numbers continue to inch up, but we'd like to see them uh, improved and encourage people to, uh, to participate and get down and get, uh, get vaccinated. And as a result, also since the 1st of October, um, the Board of Health has had two clinics, one on the 2nd and one on the 16th uh, to provide both uh, influenza shots and uh, COVID shots. Uh, they've had a total of 106 people either uh, immunized for the flu or COVID on the 2nd and 117 uh, on the 16th. And there'll be one more clinic at Town Hall on the 30th from uh, 10 to one. Um, again, so please come and participate, get yourself vaccinated either from the, the, the flu shot or um, COVID-19. And also uh, again, CVS, Walgreens and Walmart are also offering uh, all the vaccinations and, and flu shots that you need. So. Um, Again, they continue to uh, do community outreach. And uh, what's the Moderna thing is um, approved. Uh, they're looking to reach out to the members of the community that were vaccinated up at the Hillview to offer them their booster shots. So again, the, the outreach is, is terrific and uh, greatly appreciated uh, from what I've been hearing from people who participated at the Hillview um, vaccination clinic. So. Uh, congratulations to them. Uh, Dr. Daly re reported extensively to the Board of Health in relation to what was happening in the school system, um, the success that they've been having with uh, um, pool testing, uh, regular testing, uh, contact tracing. Um, he's very pleased with uh, what's occurred, even though there's been you know a few cases there, but uh, they've been able to uh, trace them. To, as far as they can tell, and from the contact tracing, it hasn't been directly through the school, but mostly through households, where kids have brought it in or staff members in the household rather than getting it through the school. Uh, so their efforts are, are paying off. And again, they're monitoring uh, systems that are in place, appear to be working well. Uh, in relation to uh, the last two weeks, um, 
Board of Health has reported that uh, we've had in the last 14 days, 41 cases uh, reported. Uh, the positivity rate in North Reading, while it's dropping, is at 2.68%, but it's still well above all of our area communities, Middlesex County and the state. State average is 1.82, Middlesex County 1.15. Again, we're at 2.68. So uh, they continue to monitor, uh, so I think it's believe 46 active cases in the community right now, but 41 in the last, uh, last 14 days. So um, again, as I mentioned, uh, they're working hard to uh, reach out to the community, encourage people to get vaccinated, uh, monitoring those cases uh, that, are, that are taking place. And again, I applaud their efforts and uh, they'll be meeting again uh, I forget, next month in about two weeks. Um, let's see what else do we have here. Uh, just one other thing, Madam Chair, uh, which you're well aware of. Um, uh, contract negotiations with the firefighters, you know, there's been some um, I, I've had some comments and I know that the board received a one uh, inquiry in relation to uh, what the status is with the firefighters contract negotiations. There's been some placards regarding the negotiations placed in some of the firefighters uh, vehicles outside the fire station, which has uh, generated some, some interest in, in, uh, in the community asking us what's going on. Uh, I don't think we should have to state this, but we stated right from the outset that uh, nobody is uh, more appreciative of our first responders and our firefighters, uh, all that they've continued to, to do to serve the community well. Um, but the placards uh, regarding, the, the placards and the social media postings um, of recent time regarding the, the current state of the contract negotiations, um, there's some false implications that the firefighters are operating without a contract. That's untrue. The firefighters continue to enjoy all of the terms, conditions, and benefits uninterrupted and without change of the contract. So there's no change in the contract status, the terms and conditions of benefits. There's a false implication that the board and the administration is not engaging and negotiating uh, with the firefighters union. We have been engaged with the firefighters union for over 18 months with myself and the chair, <laughs> Mrs. Manupelli, uh, actively participating um, with the, the town administrator, the human resource director, town council, finance director for over 18 months. And uh, for multiple dozens of hours have been invested uh, by this administration and Mrs. Manupelli and myself uh, to come to an agreement with the firefighters union. And as recently as today, four plus hours were spent uh, through the mediation process. So just wanna make it clear that um, this board, this administration, uh, Mrs. Manupelli and myself, um, place a high priority in coming to some sort of terms and agreements with the firefighters. Um, we have invited them to participate in um, assisting us to come to some sort of an agreement. It hasn't come to fruition, but it hasn't been due to a lack of effort on the part of this board or this administration. And we will continue to try and uh, to come to some sort of agreement uh, that both bodies can live with. Uh, but just want to set the record straight that the false implications that they're without a contract is untrue. So uh, with that, Madam Chair, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. I have a quick question with, with regard to the, the um, stats you, you had on the, 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 um, the virus stats. Do we have a sense of how many of the school population, the students are vaccinated? Do you have a sense of that? Do they, are they? We, we have it broken down by age groups. So from 12 oh. to 15, so ages 12 to 15, 73% um, have received one dose, 68% are fully vaccinated. And from 16 to 19, um, let's see, 16 to 19, I believe it's 68% one dose and 77% fully vaccinated. Now, of course, ages five to 12 have not yet been allowed to be vaccinated, sure. which is going to, you know, the, the state, uh, DESI has set a uh, goal of 80% before the local communities can even petition and consider being, uh, going unmasking in the, in the, in the schools. Um, for elementary schools, that's certainly not gonna happen for quite a while until they can reach the 80%. But the state has also determined, uh, Dr. Daly reported, that the middle school, high school is considered one building. 
so that the sixth graders who are 12 and under, again, is gonna lag behind and um, it's going to impact the ability to petition the state to, to basically unmask until they're included in that 12, 12 year or younger group, 11 and younger. So the sixth graders are included is the one building. So it's gonna take a little, a little bit while longer for any petition uh, if the local school board decides to do to do that, to petition the state to unmask and get to the 80%. But again, we still have a way to go, but uh, to, to the parents and for the, the kids that are participating, the levels are very good and um, they continue to grow. And I think once the, uh, the ability to vaccinate kids uh, 11 and under, you're gonna see those numbers grow substantially. So we applaud uh, the parents' efforts and the school's efforts uh, for making it easy and uh, available. and uh, so yeah, they have it all broken down by age group. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, Mr. Studo. Um, I'll keep it uh, brief first uh, to reiterate what uh, Mr. O'Leary said about the wastewater. Um, I think the town uh, and everyone who was there at town meeting, I think that uh, for something like this, that a lot of it is based on the design. I think that it takes a lot of forethought and you know a foresight to, you know, understand that it needs to happen so i feel that um you know i really think by the overwhelming response it gave me a lot of confidence that if we come back with a design that makes sense a plan that makes sense and we can come up with a reasonable way to pay for it i i do think that this project has a lot of legs under it uh and then also i'd like to um congratulate the batch elder school for the first time ever, the US News and Report did rankings for elementary school. The batch is 11th in the state. Uh, and the reason this is important as well, my understanding of the test of the rankings, it based its decision almost exclusively on proficiency of reading and math. Not how nice your building is, not how green your grass is, like test scores and actual academics so and again i might be to not totally accurate with that i just read the report today but you know it's uh it's great news when um you pop up on the list and uh and as a district we're pretty good too so i just wanted to mention that that uh you know i know a lot of work goes into that and you know i like to extend my thank you to the school committee and all the administration because it is you know to be able to have that type of ranking after the year everybody had that's i think that's even more impressive you know, as a district. So I just wanted to uh, mention that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Strigo. Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, yeah, I have a few board reports. Um, just an update, the recycling committee continues to work on a pay as you go program with um, the DPW director, Joe Parisi. Um, of course, the Veterans Event Committee are hard at work right now with Veterans Day coming up. And you heard the Veterans Director um, talk about the Veterans Dinner at the Tewksbury Country Club um, on Thursday, November 11th from five to nine. Um, limited tickets, you can email nrvets at northreadingma.gov if you'd like to come. Um, the Tewksbury Country Club pays for it all. So they, they serve a beautiful dinner. It's really a, it's really a great event. Um, community Impact Team is having a drive-through take back, DEA National Take Back Drug Day that you can drive through from nine to one at the O'Leary Center on Saturday, October 23rd and drop off any kind of um, drugs that you have that you're not using that you need to get rid of. Um, but if you can't make that, there is always a box at the North Reading Police Department open 24 seven that you can drop them at also. Um, so I think that is my board reports. I have old and new business and my colleagues are probably gonna be angry with me, but the strategic meeting that we have scheduled. I We're trying to keep it. feelings out of our minutes, so. <laughs> <laughs> I had something come up. I am actually gonna be 
on a flight at that time. So I won't be able to even virtually do that meeting. So I am hoping, I know that we've rescheduled it like a thousand times and I feel terrible, uh, but I'm hoping that maybe we could reschedule it again. <laughs> This is the first time it was my fault. <laughs> Do that. I don't know what your thoughts are, but if if we could reschedule it, I don't know if anybody had an issue with the 25th next Monday. I don't remember. That, maybe? It's, just, it's just do do um so in other words, we had our next meeting on the first, which was going to be the the next select board meeting and the right. strategic plan we had planned for the eighth. Correct. I think we had tried in and around that time, but did the board members have a conflict with the 25th? Does anyone have a conflict with the 25th? That's next Monday. Yeah, I'm, I'm really tied up. I'm really tied up next week. Yeah, I think we talked about the 25th, uh, okay. that it didn't work. And I'm fairly certain we talked about the 15th as well and somebody else was unavailable for the 15th. And, you know, I'd offer to, to, to the board that perhaps an off meeting night would be, because traditionally we did that on an off, I my recollection is we did it, we haven't had one in a while, but we did it on, not on a Monday night. If I know that it's difficult because all of us have been participating in a number of other meetings. And I know it's, we're hard pressed to kind of pinpoint that, but I don't think the 15th worked for everyone either. Is that or the 15th of November, right? That works for me, but I, but you are right. The last time we did it, I think we did it on a Tuesday or Wednesday night. We did an off night when we did it the last time. Well, what if we sh would the would the fifteenth work for everyone, or is that too? Because we are meeting on the twenty second, so would the does the Monday the fifteenth work? Works for me. Works for me. Yep, yeah, feels all right to me. Mrs. Right. Stewart, is that all right with you? All right. Are you going to be back in time, Liam? <laughs> yes, I will. I will. I, I'm I'm flying back on that night on the eighth. Oh, okay. So let's, can we save that date then? We'll, instead of having the strategic planning on the 8th, we'll do it on the 15th. And that'll just give all the board members an opportunity to, you know, kind of do some extra review of all of the topics that we have to address, which is quite a few. All right. So I really appreciate that, everybody. I know that I know that we've been putting this off and putting it off and I hated to do that, but I appreciate you working with me on that. And is it is it to begin at six, six thirty? What was the schedule? We had at six thirty, but whatever. Okay. I think that's what we had, but all right. Yeah, okay. because it was a regular kind of a meeting time. All right. Well, thank you. So we will eliminate the meeting on the eighth. Yeah. Okay, so you can delete that and that maybe that might, might make everyone not <laughs> feel so bad about adding one to the 15th. All right, As, are you all set, Mrs. Gonzalez? Yes, thank all you. All right, Mr. Walner? Yes, um, so the only thing I've been focused on is the age-friendly uh, presentation we're gonna do on Thursday, October 28th. Just as a matter of perspective, in 2019, the board um, uh, voted to accept becoming part of the network of age-friendly communities. That we have joined 50 other communities in Massachusetts. I think that number has gone up a lot higher now of the 300 communities to get on board and doing that. In 2020, we hired the UMass uh, 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 Center for Social and Demographic Research to do a survey of the town, which we had a really high number of 1400 people respond including stakeholders um, the needs assessment has results has been completed and submitted to the aarp that's kind of our starting to say within one year we have to have an action plan and so on um, or else you get pushed out of the out of the age-friendly initiative and after you have an action plan you have about three years to kind of get your act together and do it um, 
So on uh, Thursday, October 28th at the, the high school, middle school in the distance learning lab from 6.30 to 8 o'clock, um, Dr. Caitlin Coyle from the UMass Boston Center will give the results of the findings. And I'll also be um, giving a 10-year perspective about what this means to the town, kind of interpreting what they're saying to how it works the town, and also, also give out an action plan. Um, now, when people hear age-friendly, they tend to think of, well, we know it's older people who are, you know, they're, they need services, they're in need of us to take care of them. But that's not really the compelling story. That is the compelling, that is important. Those people that have, have been living in our towns for 30, 40 years, they raised their kids here, they put their kids through schools. They're also the same people that help to build the high school, help to support the schools all along. And at this point, there are a number of them that are being pushed out because of high property taxes. And we haven't been able to give them housing for them to go to. So that's been you know, an unfortunate part. But the other part of it is that we have people who come to our town specifically for the schools. And they get their kids through schools and they feel really good about the town. And all of a sudden, when the kids leave the schools, they ask the question, um, do I stay or do I go? And they start looking around as, you know, I had this great experience with the school community, but I don't see that same experience as an adult in this town and how I can contribute and how I can be a part of it and how I'll thrive in this town. And I've, I have been suggesting for many years that we have a, a problem with that, with that uh, reality. Because whenever I've asked people that question, they all look at me kind of dumbfounded like, yeah, I don't know what North Reading has to offer. The results of the survey point out, actually for the first time, that's what Dr. Caitlin Quayle is going to say, is that for the first time, they're measuring in our town that we really have this problem, that what's happening is people are coming here, come to our schools, that the town is supporting in a large way, and then they leave. And this, if this trend continues and we don't do something to stop it, we are gonna be devastated financially because the reality is our property taxes, 66% uh, of it goes to pay for the schools. And if you start taking out the people who don't have kids out of their homes, you're gonna be devastating the schools and we have no way to recover. So this has become a really urgent issue that we really have to pay attention to. And it's more than just what we classically think of as what's going on with seniors. Yes, we have to think about that, but we have to think about the generation that's deciding whether they stay or they go from our town. And our goal has to be just to keep them in our town. We need to keep our community together and it's fiscally responsible for us to do that. So I, I really strongly encourage people to pay attention to it. Come to the distance learning lab. You have to wear a mask, that's fine. There's plenty of room there. Um, we're also going to broadcast it on NORCAM, and we're going to uh, broadcast it on Zoom as well. Excuse me, Zoom as well. It won't be interactive on Zoom, but you can listen in and hear what's going on. And we'll record it as well, so people can listen to it afterwards as well. But it's really important information. It's an hour and a half, well worth your time, and I hope you can attend. Thursday, the uh, Thursday, October twenty eighth, six thirty to eight o'clock. And uh, Michael, I need a Zoom. I have to get this in the paper tomorrow. So if you can, Karen's gonna ask you that, that I can get a Zoom link so that we can, um, I can advertise that Zoom link. That's the only thing missing from my press release. If you can get that for me in the morning, I'd appreciate it. She did ask me and I'll send it to you this evening. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I have a deadline of 12 o'clock to get in the paper. And that'll be on our website, Mr. Gilberto, to, so people can see that on the calendar as well as the link on the website. Uh, it won't be on the calendar only because the calendar is uh, uh, public meetings and according to the uh, open meeting law, but it will be uh, a town news announcement, yes. I'll send you the, uh, the, uh, the article tomorrow, Michael, so you have it, so you know what I'm saying. Perfect, thank you. And I, I encourage all, everybody to attend as much as possible. And I think it actually sets up for our strategic meeting as well. I think there's actually, what we're gonna learn from that is significant going forward. So I think it's really timely that we have that meeting after this. Thank you. All set, Mr. Walner? Yes, thank you. All right. I just wanted to add, I know we we really all appreciated the members of the public showing up to the town meeting. And I also want to thank all of the uh, people responsible for the setup of the meeting space for us, the, the volunteers that came, the the uh, the workers. We see this the same faces at every town meeting. 
um, uh, clerk stats has a wonderful crew that is there. We had our own clerk, the clerk of the board, her own son was there doing his community service. And so we even have students participating. We had, uh, you know, teachers setting up the equipment to be able to run kind of a, seam a seamless meeting. So we want to thank everybody that was part of the, you know, the public facilities people that were part of the setup in the breakdown long after we left that were there to take care of things for us. And also um, something that came up in, in uh, also that was Barbara, Barbara Stats last meeting. We should reflect that and appreciate the town administrator and the moderator um, doing something special for her at that last meeting. That was quite a, quite a nice thing, quite a nice way to start the town meeting out. Uh, but sorry to see her go because we really rely upon her, but that was a nice, nice way to remember her. And um, something that came up, I think during and after the town meeting had to do with our collaboration with the CPC in terms of a few of those articles that we've tabled until the next town meeting. And there seems to be a lot of questions. Um, there, there were a lot of questions fielded and there, there were a lot of emails that we received, you know, or inquiries that we received after. So I think it's, I think it's something that maybe perhaps we can incorporate into strategic planning where we're thinking of some sort of a, of course we have reciprocity with the CPC and the CPC has reciprocity with, with us as we do with other boards and commissions. We each have our own jurisdictions, but perhaps it might be something that we would consider that, you know, that we have some sort of a policy or work on some sort of a joint policy, because I think it also ties into what Mr. Walner is saying, not just for senior housing, but for affordable housing, that we really need to have some sort of a, even if it's a policy that we just have a joint annual meeting with the CPC just to forecast, you know, gr new growth, new development, and then forecast what our you know, need is to keep up with affordable housing units. We've kind of caught it at the end of a lot of the things. And this board, I know this specifically through the efforts of uh, Mr. O'Leary and Mr. Walner has caught this in recent developments and asked, actually asked them to incorporate in affordable housing that the whole board's been on board with. And, and maybe that policy could, you know, have some sort of mandates like that in it. So I think it's important for us to, to talk about this and maybe have a meeting with them or have some sort of a joint effort made so that we're on the same page. Like I said, we have reciprocity and we have respect for one another and that what transpired doesn't take away from the incredible amount of time and effort the CPC puts into things. And we certainly rely upon their recommendations quite a bit. So I think it, people were just taken aback that for once we didn't have a meeting of the minds with them. However, I haven't been here for all the decades. I'm sure that there have been other times where the boards and commissions haven't had meetings of the mind on things at town meeting. But I think something like that, perhaps that's a, a, an area that we can talk about at the at the um, at the strategic plan, what do we want to see? Because a lot of this, you know, plays into the future future forecast for North Reading, not just in terms of affordable housing, but even affordable housing for the elderly, like Mr. Walner is talking about. And then one more thing I wanted to bring up is that the the maskers is running a haunted playground. Saturday, October 23rd, from 5.30 to 9 on the fields outside of the Batchelder School. This is a fun annual tradition for young, middle-aged, and old people alike. So everyone is welcome to join. You can go on to the website, maskers.weebly.com. Maskers is M-A-S-Q-U-E-R-S dot Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y dot com. They're actually gonna have food at this one. So I think last, the last year's COVID, I don't think they were allowed to have food, but this year their little bit of the restrictions are loosened up. So they'll be able to have uh, food in addition to the, to the um, 
you know, games and the hay rides and the fun stuff, entertainment stuff. So please come out, show your support, have a little fun. It's fun to start to get together as a town again with these community events. And these are all ages welcome. So uh, young and middle and, and old alike are welcome. That's all I have for the moment. All set? Just an update. Top of the third, <laughs> six, nothing, six nothing Red Sox. Nice. Ooh. And that's a good way to end this one. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Madam Chair, I move to adjourn. I'll second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Thank you, folks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.